Mom. Happy Mom's first week. Love you. I love my mom because she is a strong, independent woman, and she does a great job of taking care of me and my two sisters. Happy Mother's Day. I love my mom because she is careful, and she is beautiful, and she is nice. I love our mom because she puts up with us, uh, and she makes sure we have what we need when we need it. And she also puts the same amount of crazy in the world as we do. Girl, she makes my food. That's pretty good. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I love my mom because she loves me and she's beautiful and God made her so sweet. Hey, it's Jason and Nico. And I love my mom because she's my everything. She's my ride or die. She'll fight for me. She'll die for me. She'll do anything for me. And I really appreciate her and I love her with all my heart. Um, and, I, and I love my mom because well, it's, it's my mom, you know. She gave birth to me and I have a lot. I have to thank her a lot for that. And she she's just always there and she's very supportive and she's very nice and she listens to what I have to say and she at least appreciates me and I appreciate her so I love my mom. I love my mom because she cares for me and loves me. I love my mom because she's my number one supporter and she always makes me feel better when I'm upset. I love you mom and happy Mother's Day. I love my mom because she gives me video game time. I also love her because she is nice. My mommy is good because she's amazing, and I love her very much. See, 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 see. Happy Mother's Day! I love my mom because I love her. <laughs> Happy, Happy Mother's Day. Day! Thanks for all you do for us. We love you. I love you, Mommy. I love my mom because she always knows how to cheer me up when I'm sad. Hi mom, happy Mother's Day. Uh, I just want to say thank you for all that you do. And you put everyone before yourself. Love you. Well, good morning and welcome to Genesis Church on this Mother's Day. So a happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there. And um, hey, every one of you ladies, we appreciate you and uh, God bless you. And we're glad you're all here to join us for our service this morning. Uh, if you're watching us on our Facebook feed, please do me a big favor to start with, and that is towards the bottom of the picture, you'll see there's a button there that says share. And if you would hit the share button, then everybody who's a fa friend of yours on Facebook will be able to see the service and join it too. Thanks for being with us. Let's join our band now as we worship the Lord together.
Would you pray with me this morning? Father, we are so thankful for how good you are. Lord, for how you pour your blessings out upon us. Father, let us keep sight of that. In times of confusion, Lord God, that you are so good. So Lord, this morning we just thank you for your presence here. I pray that you would just move in a mighty way this morning that you would just be with us, open our eyes and ears. Father, it's in your name we pray this morning. Amen. Amen. Well, this is the point in our service we normally say, please take your seats. But there's a pretty good chance you're sitting down already. So make yourselves comfortable. Thanks so much for being here with us, worshiping on this Mother's Day Sunday morning. We're We're glad you're part of us. People are joining us from all over, I know, for our live stream service. Um, Hey, if you're watching on Facebook, why don't you just take a moment to um, type in the comment and tell us where you're from. And uh, let's just get some idea of how far abroad people are traveling to be at Genesis this morning. So why don't you just type in, hi, I'm from wherever you are. And don't forget, if you're watching on Facebook, if you hit the share at the bottom of the, um, the screen there, then it actually means that this service goes to your feed and all your Facebook friends will see it and get the benefit of it too. 
We're tremendously grateful for the um, ongoing support of everyone who gives to uh, make everything we do at Genesis possible. And uh, our church is totally supported by, uh, solely by the income and the gifts of those who are part of it. And we, we are so grateful to you that though we're not physically together, we're not passing offering buckets, but everyone is still committed to what we're doing and is giving. And uh, we appreciate that. I'll just remind you there are three ways you can give. You can mail a check to us at our church address, 28A Industrial Boulevard in Medford. You can go online to genesisli.com, as an uh, increasing number of people have been doing. And at uh, our website there, there's secure giving that you can set up very easily. And then there's just my personal favorite, which is texting, because I think it's cool, and I think I'm cool. So I, I, I text my giving, and uh, you simply put a dollar amount in and put in the number, 631-212-0500, put in a dollar amount, and the first time you do it, a text comes back, and it guides you to setting up. So you can say where you want the money to come from. And after that, you just send it. You get a receipt back straight away to your email and to the text. So you can text to 631-212-0500. You could do that now during the commercial break here if you want. Okay, 631-212-0500. So what's happening at Genesis just now? Well, there's a ton of stuff going on. You can find out, actually, if you've got the Uversion app. If you don't, go to the App Store. It's free. And when you open the app, if you look down uh, in the bottom right-hand corner where it says More and go to Events, you'll find us there. You'll also find an outline for all of today's teaching there. Or you can go to our website, genesisli.com. So there are a bunch of ways you can do that. You can connect with us on Facebook, on um, on the other things, um, Twitter, Instagram. Lord, I was born too early for this stuff. Anyway, we're there. Look for us. I'm there too, believe it or not. And you can connect with us those ways. A couple of things happening this week we want to make sure you're aware of. Tuesday evening, we're continuing our Tuesday talks where I'm speaking about the Jesus I know. And then after that, we go over to Zoom and we have small breakout groups that talk about the topic that I'll be teaching on. So if you want to join us Tuesday at 7 on the Genesis Church Facebook page, we'll see you there. And if you want a nightcap any night of the week, go to Genesis Church Facebook page, 9 o'clock at night, and I simply read the Bible. Or, as my less than respectful children call it, bedtime stories with Rog. So uh, please do feel free to join me any night of the week at 9 o'clock. So, listen, I want to say a couple of things just as um, I introduce our speaker for today. And I want to put this disclaimer first and foremost. We do not have a woman speaking because it's Mother's Day and we're putting up a token woman preacher. We are totally committed to recognizing people according to their gifting and not their gender. So, so our speaker today is our associate pastor who uh, you may or may not know is also our daughter, and uh, I am just blessed and proud to introduce her to you. Charlotte Pendleton is going to come, and she's speaking for us today. Wait. What I forget? Why aren't you speaking today? Some people don't know that story. <laughs> Rumor has it that several years ago on Mother's Day, I preached an inappropriate message. And I have been banned from teaching on Mother's Day. Is that it? There's a story in the book of Judges. It's a wonderful story. And part of it is that a lady takes a tent peg and drives it through a man's skull. And I talked about that one Mother's Day, and that's why she's up today. You're banned. Not allowed anymore. Unbelievable. Hey, good morning. My name is Charlotte, like Dad introduced, Dad being Roger. Uh, I'm one of the staff members here at Genesis. So I am thrilled that I get to spend this morning with you, chatting with you, talking with you, wherever you are right now. I'm jealous because probably a lot of you are in pajamas right now, you're comfortable, whatever else, and, but I'm thrilled to be here. So I realize that there are a lot of you who have found us since uh, this all happened, and you may not have seen me teach before, so I thought I'd better clue you in to a couple of my, I guess, quirks 
while I teach. I wanted to just give you the heads up straight up before I start that there are a couple things that I'm known for. So one is that at times I talk very, very fast while I am up here. So <laughs> see, those who are here are agreeing. So here's the thing. Here is the great part about doing church this way. If at any point you don't catch what I say this morning, if you are on Facebook, you have my permission. Just type in, what did she just say? And we will pray that somebody with the gift of interpretation can tell you exactly what I said. Okay, so that, that's number one. Number two, I am known for moving around a lot when I am up here when I teach. In fact, our camera operator, John, texted me this week and he said, do you think you could do one of those fireside chats this Sunday where you just sit in a chair and it'll be much easier? Because usually when we're here, you're all here, you can kind of see where I am out of your peripheral vision. There is one person this morning who has a lot of pressure on him because he has to try and keep up with me with a camera. So if at any point I disappear from your TV screen, please know that John is doing his best to locate me, and he will find me as soon as possible, and I will be back there. Okay, so those are the two things, fast talking, moving around a lot, but apart from that, let's pray we have a good morning. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you that no matter what is going on in the world right now, that you're still in control, you're still on your throne, and you know exactly what is happening and how all this is going to turn out. And I just ask this morning that you would help us just to push everything else to the side and just to concentrate on you and concentrate on your word and concentrate on what exactly it is that you want to say to us over the next 30 minutes or so. And we just thank you that we have the ability and the capability to do this this morning. And we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I will be completely honest with you. <laughs> Wait. Hold on. Preacher probably shouldn't start with that part. I promise I'll be honest with you for the rest of the morning too. But here's the thing. For this past week, I will be real with you. And I've been in a bit of a funk. And I think it was to do with the fact I'm kind of over all this now, living this way. This week, it kind of really just hit me. It's like we've done this now for a couple of months. It's like I, I, I'm just done. I just want to get back to living my life, being able to do what I want, when I want, being able to go where I want, when I want. I think part of it may have been that I knew that this Sunday I was going to be standing up here, and I honestly had thought that the next time I stood up here to speak, that every single chair here would be filled and we'd be back to normal. And it kind of hit me, I think, knowing that I was going to be up here today, and actually there's only a few people in here, the band are here and the tech team are here, and I am so thankful for them. But I love when I get up here to speak, I love to be able to see people's faces and expressions, and it's easy to kind of feed off of that and get a little interaction going. And I think this week it kind of hit me that that wasn't the case. I was just kind of done with what we're living through at the moment. Now, don't get me wrong, I am happy to keep doing it if that's what it takes for us all to get through this. But it just kind of, I was in a bit of a funk. But I appreciate that I have had the past two months much, much easier than a lot of other people have. I know that a number of you have battled this virus and thankfully have come through it, but it's been a tough road while you've been going through it. I know a lot of you have had loved ones, friends, colleagues, neighbors that you have actually lost to this virus, especially here in New York, there's a lot of it has been happening. I am realizing this morning that a lot of you have lost your employment. You've had to shut down your business. You have no idea what is going to be happening or what life is going to look like on the other side of all this. I am aware as well that this morning, as we celebrate Mother's Day, that not, for not every woman is Mother's Day a happy day. Mother's Day can be a tough day for a lot of people. And I'm aware that there are so many of you today who just want this day to be over so you can get to tomorrow because it reminds you of a lot of things you would rather not think about today, of where you are in life and what has happened to you. And for so many of us, we battle through so many things and we're in different situations, but we go through battles, we suffer things. And it may be that you are here this morning and you're saying to yourself, okay, God, where are you in the middle of all this? Like, have you forgotten about us? We're this planet that right here that you created and 
This whole planet is going through stuff right now. God, where are you when this is happening? And you know what? It's okay to ask that. Actually, in Psalm 22, the psalmist asked that very thing. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me, he said. Those words, of course, you will uh, recognize because Jesus himself said those words when he was hanging on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's okay to ask the question. I think God understands when we get to the point where we say, you know what, God, I just don't get it anymore. Where are you? This week, I was, uh, I've been trying to do a little more exercise because quarantine snacks are a dangerous thing. So I was out walking, and when I was walking, I was listening to a sermon, and actually it was from a, a very well-known speaker, but it was from several years ago. And he was talking about how we go through different things, we go through different trials, we go through different times in our lives when things are tough. And he said, nothing is new under the sun. He goes, there is nothing that you were going through that somebody else has not gone through before. And I actually stopped, because I'm good at stopping while I'm walking, I need a lot of that. I stopped and I said to myself, wait, they're going to have to take this sermon off this guy's archives because he's never heard. We're living through a pandemic right now. Like you've never done, you cannot say that this is something that's been lived through before. But actually, I got to thinking. And I started thinking about the book of Isaiah. And in the book of Isaiah, you find the Israelites there, and they're in complete dire straits at that time. There is a lot going on. Jerusalem, which had been their capital, their home, had been overrun by the enemy. Its walls had been knocked down. The temple had been destroyed. A lot of their leading citizens had been carried off and had been taken away as prisoners of war. And here they are looking at the ruins of their city and wondering what was going on. There's some of them that Isaiah is talking to, they're living in Babylon. And here's the thing, their lives are totally disrupted. They have no idea how things are gonna work out or how they're gonna return to normal or when they're gonna return to normal or what normal would look like when they get there. They're discouraged, depressed, trapped, afraid, miserable. Sound familiar? Right? I feel I've run through the gamut of all of those emotions over the past few weeks. So actually, when I say there's nothing new under the sun, it's true. So here we have the Israelites who are pretty much prisoners, which is how, if we look at it, some of us feel right now. And here's what they say. In Psalm 137, they said this, Beside the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept as we thought of Jerusalem. As they thought back to how life had been, as they thought back to how it was, how they used to live, as they thought about the former things, they sat and they wept. I haven't quite got to the weeping part yet, but I've been pretty close a few days. Especially when I drive past places where it's like, wait, I remember going there. I remember being able to walk around there and do, right? It can be so easy for us to sit and weep. And, and actually in Isaiah 49, here's what they also said. They said, Jerusalem says, the Lord has deserted us. The Lord has forgotten us. And this morning, what I want to do is I want to remind you of a very, very, very simple fact. And that is, no matter what is going on, no matter how we are feeling, God has not forsaken you. He still remembers you. He has not forgotten where you are, what your zip code is. God remembers you. And here's what we need to realize. Our feelings can often lie to us. What I am feeling actually can be really, really far away from what actually is the truth. See, our feelings can change day to day, week to week, moment to moment. Those feelings may change, but our situation and our circumstance may stay the same. Nothing had changed for me this week. We, I was still on the same routine. Nothing has changed with regards to where we can go, what we can do, but this week especially, my feelings told me, well, it's a lot worse. Feelings are not always the, way, the thing that we should look at. And 
You know, some people would say that the Israelites were justified in feeling abandoned, their homes destroyed, being captive, but actually their feelings here did not actually reflect reality. In 1 Kings 19, we find Elijah the prophet, and he's running from Jezebel, and he's exhausted, and he's depressed, and he t- says to God, he goes, you know what, God, I'm done. I'm the only one left. I just want it over with. I'm finished with. That was how he felt. That was his feelings. But actually, God corrects him, and God told him there are actually 7,000 more people still faithful to God in Israel. He felt alone. He felt done. He was alone, lonely. He was done with everything. But God reminded him there were 7,000 more people. See, there are periods in our lives when the challenges and the demands of daily living can sap our reserves of energy, joy, spiritual vitality. It just gets to be too much sometimes. But during those times, we need to ask ourselves, is what I'm feeling actually the truth? Is what I am thinking in my head actually the reality of what the situation is? And here's the best way to do that, is to hold it up to something that is infallible. I will be being completely trivial on this level. See. There are times when my feelings tell me that the answer to whatever is ailing me in life, whether I am stressed, whether I am worried, whether I am angry, whether I am happy, my feelings tell me that a brownie is an answer to whatever is going on. Right? Have you ever noticed your feelings never tell you to grab the salad? Always. But here's the thing. When I do that for a while, my pants quickly tell me that that is not the truth. Right? Because then I become more stressed, worried, angry, whatever else. What we need to do is look at our feelings, hold it up to what is infallible. And of course, what we do at that point is we turn to the Word of God. Philippians 4.8 says this. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. That's where I need to concentrate my mind. In this crazy world that we are living in at the moment, we need to immerse ourselves in the unfailing, unchanging truth, and that is found right here. When there are so many agendas right now trying to tell me that this is right and they are wrong and this is what should be happening, there is only one place that I can go where I can say, okay, I know that is true. Yep, that's true too. That's true too. Wherever it is in here, I know that this is God's word. um, There's an author and a speaker, her name is Ann Voskamp, that I love. And she had a quote that I read this week and it said this, the cure to an overwhelmed life some of us are living those at the moment, is a daily overdose of scripture. A daily overdose of this is what's going to cure us. See, in God's word, we find truth. In God's word, we find peace. In God's word, we find hope. Those things are not found anywhere else, and especially at the moment with everything that is going on. When I need to know the truth, when I need to know that how to feel better about what is going on, when I need to be able to look and say, okay, there is hope. This is where I need to turn there. So Paul goes on in Philippians and he says this, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. It's not enough for me just to read this. I then actually have to do what it says. I then have to put it into practice. I then have to say, okay, I need to make this change. Okay, this is how I need to change my thinking. This is how I need to change my actions. I need to then consume this. Psalm 33, 4. For the word of the Lord holds true, and we can trust everything he does. See, when my feelings tell me one thing about God, 
I then need to say, okay, is that true? Let me find out. If my feelings tell me about what God is up to, I need to take out my Bible or I need to immerse myself. You know what? Listening to podcasts of preachers, teachers, whatever at the moment, instead of the news. Turning on your TV and finding something that's going to feed your spirit instead of something that's going to freak you out and wonder what's going on in the world. It's what's going to help you. Spending time here is what's going to help you. That's what's going to tell you, are my feelings true or are they not true? So we, here we have the Israelites in Isaiah 49, and they're saying, okay, God's forgotten us. But actually, God answers, and God says this. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Mother's Day may bring up some memories of your mom. Some of us are blessed with rock stars for moms who have been there with us every step of the way, and we know there is absolutely no chance that she will ever, ever forget us. Some of you, today is a tough day because your memories of your mom are not good or your memories of your mom are non-existent whatsoever. And then there's a bit of a gray area. I find myself, I think, in the gray area when it comes to my mom. My son, when he started kindergarten, had to be met off the bus every day. And between myself and his two grandmothers, we kind of had a rotating schedule because I worked full time. Except for the one day when I was happily at work doing my thing and I got a phone call from the school to say, nobody met Jace off the bus, so we had to bring him back to the school. My son is, was scheduled to graduate college yesterday. He will still remind you of the time his mother forgot him <laughs> off the school bus in kindergarten. And he reminds me often about that. So that's why I find myself in the gray area there. But here's the thing. No matter where your mom was or no matter where you are when it comes to mothering, here's God's answer. No matter what happens, God will never, ever forget you. No matter what you are going through in life right now, no matter the hardships, the trials that you are going through, no matter where you find yourself right now, I just want to remind you, God has not forgotten you. God has never forgotten you. God has not forgotten you right now. And God will not forget you in the future. You are his child, and he is right there with you. In 2008, there was an earthquake in a city in China. And when they went in to do some rescue and basically recovery at the end of it, they were going through the rubble of a building. And they found a little baby. And this little baby was about three weeks old, they reckon. Baby was wrapped up in a blanket, completely fine. Nothing had touched the baby. The baby was okay. The baby was completely fine because over the top of the baby, kneeling over the baby, was the baby's mother, who had borne the brunt of everything that had come down, and she had passed away. But she died protecting her baby underneath. And when they took this baby to get it checked out, they, they took it to the hospital, they started undoing the blanket that the baby was wrapped in. And inside that blanket, they found a cell phone. And on that cell phone, the mother had typed, my dear, if you survive, please always remember I love you. And that's the message that God has been sending to his people throughout the centuries. It's the message he sent when Jesus gave his life. It's the message that we find over and over and over again in the pages of the Bible. And God wants you to remember today, remember, I love you. Remember, I love you. And just like that mom, remember, I, there, a life was given so that you could be saved. 
In fact, it says he makes sure that he remembers you. The next verse in Isaiah 49. See, I have engraved you on the palm of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. I am a person who, if there's something really important that I need to remember at the end of the day or whenever, I tend to write a note on my hand. I don't know, it's a really bad habit, but it's just, because that way I know I'll remember it. See, here's the problem at the moment with everything going on. Considering my hands could be made to make like alligator handbags or whatever, I wash my hands so often at the moment that that practice is pretty useless because there is nothing, I'm washing and washing and washing, anything I write on here is gone probably within an hour. But here's the great part. God doesn't just say, you know what, I'm gonna take a Sharpie and write your name on my hands. He says, I have engraved you on the palm of my hands. That's how you're always before him. You're always in front of him. He's never gonna forget you. You're always there, not, it, not just written, engraved in his hand is your name, is my name. That's how much you mean to him, and that's how much I, I mean to him. So today, a reminder that God remembers you. Just like a mom, he remembers you, that he has his, your name engraved in your palms. No matter what you are going through this morning, God loves you and he remembers you. See, trials are gonna happen to all of us. God does not promise any of us plain sailing from the minute we give our lives to him to the minute we see him face to face. Troubles are gonna come. No one will go through their entire life without troubles or hurt or pain. And some of you are going through those things right now and you're right in the thick of them and you're right in the midst of them. See, I think sometimes God allows difficulties to happen to us just to prove that he's God. Sometimes difficulties are the time when we actually find ourselves getting closer to God and realizing that we actually do need him. When things are good, we coast and we're like, it's okay, God, I've got this. Don't worry about it. I can take care of it. But you know what? When troubles come, I'm reminded of the fact that I cannot do this alone. I cannot do this on my own. I, can, I need him with me every step of the way. Sometimes I think God allows troubles in our lives just so that we can see his power, but also so that others can see his power so that others can see in our lives God at work. God can, they can see God's favor on us. They can see us living because of God's grace. They know that his hand is on our lives. It's not just about us, but God wants to show others how he has his hand on our lives. And here's the great part. God doesn't just say, I'll remember you when things happen. God doesn't just say, oh yeah, there's Charlotte. She's going through some stuff. I remember her. Not how it works, right? His promise is that when we are going through things, he'll be right there with us, holding us up, sheltering us, being our rock when we go through all the struggles that we may go through in life. I've seen a lot of people um, over the past, during this period that we're in, I don't know what we're going to call it when it's all over with, but during this period, Psalm 91 seems to have become a great source of peace and strength for a lot of people, and I've seen people quoting it and saying things about it. And, you know, it's a great psalm. If you have not read it, go read Psalm 91. It talks about God being our refuge and our fortress and how no harm will come to us when God is with us. And somebody the other day I saw refer to it as the coronavirus psalm. I bet David never anticipated that when he wrote it. Okay, but Psalm 91 is a coronavirus psalm. There's actually another verse that has become my kind of coronavirus uh, verse, and it's found in Isaiah 46, 4. If you're reading it on the screen right now, you've worked out why this is my coronavirus verse, okay? Here it is. I will be your God throughout your lifetime until your hair is white with age. I made you 
and I will care for you. I will carry you along and save you. This is my verse right now because there's not a hair salon open that I can go to to help me with my hair, okay? So God promises he's going to help us until your hair is white with age. Sorry, Tom. No idea. Tom, Tom our drummer, is sitting on the front row, and he, yeah. It's all good. I think he's got you too. It's all, it's, it's all, but in all seriousness, here's why I love this verse. I made you and I will care for you. I will carry you along and save you. It's not a fact of God saying, okay, I made you, now you're on your own. And for some of you today, that may be how your mom was and those are the memories you have of her today. And today I really want to remind you, that's not what God does. God made you and he will care for you. He will carry you along. When I don't have the strength to get through what I'm going through, when I don't have the energy, when I don't know if I can make an, take another step, I don't need to. Because God's right there beside me. He is carrying me and he is going to save me. No matter what I am going through in life, I'm not alone. He doesn't just remember me. He's going to carry me through it. We had an email um, a couple of weeks ago, and it was an email from a lady who is part of the Genesis family. And she wanted to let us know that she had been that day for a checkup. She's five months pregnant. And during that checkup, they had actually discovered that the baby had no heartbeat and the baby was no longer living. And she was asking if we could pray for her because the next day she was going to be going to the hospital and they were going to be ending that pregnancy. And she just asked if we could pray for her when she was about to go through that horrendous day. And the next night, Dad got in touch with her and asked how she was doing and how things went. And here's what she said. She said, that morning she went to the hospital, one of the big local hospitals here, and she went in, she went into her room, and a nurse came in, and this was the nurse who was going to be with her throughout this horrific procedure. And the nurse was going to be with her throughout the day, and she helped her to get ready. And the nurse said to her, would you like a chaplain to talk to? The nurse knew what was going to be coming and how that was going to go along. And this lady said, it's okay, I actually have my own pastor that I could talk to. So the nurse said to this lady, oh, you go to church. What church do you go to? So she said, I go to Genesis Church in Medford, just up the road. And the nurse turned to her, and she said, so do I. So do I. They didn't actually know each other, sad part about different services and a big building. But throughout that day, with what that lady had to go through, she went through it alongside somebody who went to the same church as her, who was part of the same family as she was. God promises, you're going to go through trials, but I'm going to carry you. And in that day, that nurse was truly God's hands and feet to this lady as she went through what I'm sure was the worst day of her life. God was there beside her, right there with her. If you get a minute today, do you think you could pray for that lady? Because I think today is going to be a tough day for her. So if you could just remember her. God knows her name. But if you could just remember her today, it's going to be hard, I'm sure. But I love the fact that no matter what we are going through, no matter what we go through, that God is right there beside us, carrying us, caring for us, and ultimately saving us. One of my favorite verses is, is uh, found in the message version, and it's in Psalm 36. A lot of big words, but I love it. God's love is meteoric, his loyalty astronomic, his purpose titanic, his verdicts oceanic. Listen to this part. Yet in his largeness, nothing gets lost. Not a man, not a mouse slips through the cracks. No matter the fact that God is the God of the whole universe, no matter the fact that there are billions and billions of people on this planet, 
God promises that not a man nor a mouse, nothing big, nothing small, is ever going to slip through the cracks because his love is so big, his loyalty is so large, and yet he is going to be there for you no matter what is happening. Each and every one of us can rest assured in that today. No matter what is happening in our lives, no matter what is going on in our lives, God is there to carry us through it. It's something that we really need to be confident in. Something that we really, really can be, just know that God is going to do and God is going to be there. We need to be people who are confident of this. We need to change our perspective and remember that the same God who is with us in the good times is going to be the same God who will carry us through the tough times. Psalm 23, so the, David says this, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You ask me to quote Psalm 23, you're getting King James Version every time. But here is the great part about it. David knew that the valley of the shadow of death was going to happen. There were going to be troubles. There were going to be things the enemy was going to throw at him. There were going to be things that were going to happen in his life. But he had knew without a shadow of a doubt that he was going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And this morning, I want to remind you, if you're going through hell, just keep walking. Don't remember who did that, but it was a quote, right? No matter what you are going through, you are going to get through it. You are going to get to the other side of it. You're going to be, see, the dawn is going to happen. But remember that as you are going through it, God is right there beside you. He has not forgotten you. Just lift your eyes up, lift your head up, and you will see that he is right there. He has not forgotten you. He is going to save you, and he is going to carry you, and he will take you through whatever it is that you are going through right now. Whatever is troubling you right now, know that God is there for you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. That's why it's so important to remember the promises that he made. Read them. Look them up. Remind yourself. Remind yourself that your feelings are fickle and they are not always connected to reality. Remind yourself that no matter how you feel, God can never, ever, ever forget you. In fact, he has your name right there on the palm of his hand. It says your name. He's never going to forget you. And remind yourself that the same God who made you is the same God who is going to carry you, not just remember you, he's going to carry you as you go through the rough times and the tough times. No matter what the devil may throw at you, God is there for you, and God is on your side, not just on your side, he's leading you as you go through what it is you're going through. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, and God, I know that there are so many people who are hurting right now in so many different areas, and I just ask today that you would remind us of who you are. I ask today that you would just make yourself near to us. Help us to feel your presence. Help us to know that not only do you remember us, but that you are right there beside us, carrying us through whatever difficulties, whatever trials, whatever troubles we're going through. Help us to know that we are not alone. And we'll thank you for the amazing miracles that we are going to see on the other side of the things that we're going through right now. So we just thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, stick around with us for a couple of minutes as the band finishes up and have a great, great Mother's Day. Thank you.
Mother's Day. We'll see you next week.